I love Connor. He's he he's uh, he's fun to watch. He's exciting. Always winning these fights, but he's too full of himself. Ultimately, like being in Dublin, he's like kind of like inspired a nation. He could hurt Mayweather in the first couple of rounds. I think he could knock him out. I think you're gonna win, and uh, you can just you know kick him in the throat. Man, I think his trash talking is it's warranted. You know, he's yeah, talking shit. He's talking shit and that stuff. But you know, I mean, there's a smile on his face when he does it. So yeah, it's good at what he does. Fair play to him. We are Subset and we are a multidisciplinary artist collective with interests ranging from art, marketing, music and film to finance, hospitality and clothing. The premise on which Subset is built is the combination of artists from various different disciplines combine their talents and skills to push forward culture in Ireland and to attract culture from other countries so rather than have our creatives leave and our country never get to experience their creative talents we want them to stay here and expand and progress and we also want to attract creatives from other countries here so that we can collaborate with them we do this through many different outlets the primary one which most people are probably familiar with is artwork we first heard of Connor in 2011-2012. A lot of our friends were very interested in MMA and the UFC, so we heard of this young Irish guy kind of storming his way up to the ranks and making a name for himself. But it wasn't until his fight with Diego Brando that Subset really took notice. Several of us were in New York pursuing another venture, and it was very early on in the day. The streets of Manhattan were filled with people running around trying to find a bar to watch the McGregor fight in. When we saw that, that was pretty crazy because we'd only heard about him kind of through word of mouth, not too much information. Then when we watched the fight, it was very obvious that he was a star straight away. We contacted some of the team that were back home. We decided we'd produce a small mural of Connor. And once we did that, Connor reposted it and then we got a lot of traction. And from that point there, that's when things really started to change. I mean, I think the main inspiration or the main driver behind that inspiration is the fact that he does what he wants, when he wants how he wants and he doesn't listen to anybody telling them that he can't do it. We've spent so long being told by people, you can't do this, you can't do this. And usually when you ask them why, they can't answer you. So I suppose the inspiring thing about Connor is he doesn't even bother to ask why, he just goes and does it. We were contacted by John Kavanagh on the Thursday after the fight was announced on the Wednesday. He requested we come and visit SBG. We did so. He then walked us down to an empty warehouse where Connor was going to train. When we arrived, John pointed to two gone off cans of Club Orange that were marked out on the floor and he said, this is where the ring is going and this is where the bags are going and this is where we're going to train for one of the biggest fights in sporting history. Then we just had a quick chat. He told us he wanted to give something to Connor that could help him visualize his victory over Mayweather. He said he thought the best way to do that would be Connor knocking him out. We agreed um, and then we came back and we started to plan for what turned out to be one of the biggest projects that we've ever done. That's always been the problem for us is getting on people's radars. As far as the quality of what we do, I mean, pretty straightforward that what we do is good. The risk of sounding arrogant, but fuck it, that's the truth. Clear purpose, clear vision. It's one thing, everything else in this business wavers, but our vision never does. Even when things are really, really bad, that vision is the one glue that holds us all together. When you have that sense of drive behind a shared vision, the will of one man is very strong, and the will of several, when it's all aligned absolutely perfectly, which is rare, it's very, very strong. We've bent many, many times, but nothing has even come close to breaking us yet. The reason why we take inspiration from Connor doing what he wants to do when he wants to do it is because he's different in his industry and we believe we're different in our industry also. Our approach is very, very different and people don't like things done differently. People don't like the established order being upset, especially if it's going to hurt their pockets. I mean, there's always pushback for the way in which we want to do things because once we get things up and running properly, and once we've made a name for ourselves, it's gonna be very, very, very difficult for people to recommend different formats of promotion to ours. Because ours is very different. My name is Lisa Maloney, I'm 21 years old. I do kickboxing in my club here in Tipperary Town and I'm an ISK World Kickboxing Champion. 
What got me into kickboxing was my friend Sophia. And I was like, oh, this might be a good thing to get me fitter for playing football. And after about a year, I was like, I think I want to give up the football and get into kickboxing, competing. So after a year, I started fighting and getting into competitions. And within sport, everyone has their inspirations. And I suppose some of my inspirations are the likes of Casey Taylor and Conor McGregor. If you look at his videos or anything, his warm-ups are, they're really different to anyone else's. Like, I was watching a clip the other night, he was, he was shadow boxing and he really had his own way of doing it. You have to have that mind frame about it as well. And like, watching someone uh, like him there, just watching snippets of him sparring or anything like all his training sessions, it would really inspire you. You're like, God, I'd love to be able to do that. Like, I always got good encouragement. My mum, my brother at home, my coach Craig here and all my teammates. You need that, like, you need the support. It just makes me more eager and determined because it kind of shows that maybe I can be to their level, the likes of professional and sports. I guess the next challenge for me really of course, I really want to win a few more Irish titles, different weight class, maybe the 55 kg, and also world titles would be great. My name is Joe Prendergast. I'm the founder of Hamptons Floor Store. Um, created the company in 2014, about the same time as McGregor was climbing publicly. We decided to use McGregor the first time when Jose Aldo was fighting him. Aldo pulled out at the last minute. So we launched a picture of McGregor thinking of Aldo. The team was Hamptons Floor Store. We never pulled out. It went viral that day. There was a lot of buzz about it. Got what we wanted out, but got huge traction and went again. Then eventually he did fight Aldo and he sparked him out in 13 seconds. It was great. I thought, I have to do something about this. He's after taking over the whole business like he said he would. I got an image of Aldo. It was just Aldo unconscious asleep on the Ground. So we did a big campaign saying you don't need a Brazilian to get laid and we did a billboard on the Nice Road and it went everywhere. It was on Fox News. Conan O'Brien did an interview with McGregor in New York about it on his show. An Irish flooring company has used the photograph of him lying down to put up a billboard. And this you actually pass this on the street. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Any chance we get, we do end with McGregor. He's just, he's an inspiration. Um, he's only from up the road in Crumlin there, I'm from Ratmines. It's a nice place to live. It's when the school right up the road there, St. Louis, wasn't good in school, I was always in trouble, I was always getting thrown out of class. Went in working then in the floor business, and I found that I was just natural at it. All the attributes that got me thrown out of school were getting me promoted in work and getting me further ahead in life. I start building their brand, building their company, but I found it hard asking them. I just felt like they hadn't a clue. I said, I can take these. This whole market is open for me. I can take all of them. So I said, I'm out of here. I'm gonna do my own thing, and I'll show you how it's done. A lot of people tried to stop me, supply chain, all that stuff. The people in my company now are amazing. They're brilliant people. Being around them every day is inspiring. We have everyone involved in Hamptons wanting the same thing. We wanna dominate this market now and move and bounce on to the next one. But we want to be number one globally. We all know what we want and how to get it. I'll admit, you know, I'm not a huge UFC fan, but I've always liked Conor McGregor. I just love his persona and he's just so much personality. And, you know, that's what I focus on. He's almost like a caricature of himself. My name is Nilo Lachlan. I'm a full-time artist, probably best known for my caricatures, cartoons. I'm doing this maybe 27 years. I used to go to animation college and I worked on uh, Teenage Ninja Turtles, Give Up Your Else Sins, All Dogs Go to Heaven, all that kind of stuff. For the last 17 years, I've been caricaturing and doing portraits and that kind of stuff. And when I'm not too busy, I do paintings for galleries. The difference for me, I suppose, in other artists that I generally just pick some because I something about them that I like or that I find them interesting. I actually don't paint to sell. And if it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That, that's not why I do it. I, I did many different Conor McGregor kind of cartoons and portraits and different things, but um, I remember it was Sunday morning. I just heard on the radio that he was about to be a dad. Just the idea just came to me of this, you know, his kid, what would Conor McGregor's kid be like? And I was thinking, you know, he'd be there giving out to him and the kid has have the same attitude as him. And Conor McGregor's telling him, go to your room. And the kid is going, no, or what? You'll do nothing, you'll do F nothing kind of you know backing him and so on. I thought it was a nice idea, I didn't think too much about it. I put it up online 
and then the phone just went crazy. I mean, you know, you, know, you hear about things going viral and stuff, but I've never had anything go viral before. It was trending in Australia, I was having people contact me from over, all over the world asking could they use it for this, that and the other. Another cartoon I did was uh, King Kong, King Connor, it was kind of a pun on that where Conor McGregor's hanging off the uh, one of the buildings in America and the planes are flying around and they're attacking him and he's just shouting at them and you know you'll do nothing you'll do effing nothing and he just gives you so much mileage inspires all these sort of funny ideas and you know in, in relation to the painting of Connor I don't always but sometimes I put my stuff in galleries I tend to like to keep the original this particular day I was in town and I got a phone call to say from the gallery to say that my Conor McGregor had been stolen I almost had a heart attack because I thought it was the original it turns out the original and the print were beside each other but the print was much lighter than the original whoever decided to take it obviously decided this one was much lighter so I'll run off with this one there was lots of different sites of him. People thought, originally thought he bought it, except he was wearing a tracksuit and he looked a bit, he looked a bit dishevelled. Not your usual art buyer. And he was seen on buses traveling throughout Dublin. He was spotted out somewhere beyond Santry. Then he was spotted in town with it. Um, in a, it was in a shopping trolley. And I was getting all these reports from everywhere. Like it's all over social media. When, when it comes to drawing Conor McGregor, every photo is different. The one that I did originally where he's roaring with the spit and the roar and so on is gonna be different from the next one. The next one is a more pensive one. It's more as kind of I'm ready to fight kind of look. And I will have a new Conor McGregor painting soon. I think anybody who takes it to where he has, and who's Irish of course, because you know I'm I'm actually really proud that he's Irish. I just think it's fantastic I, and I say fair play to him and I hope he I hope he makes all he can out of it and you know I think he's just I think he's brilliant. There's there's a lot of sacrifices involved in in being a professional athlete, a top class athlete. It's not like any other job that you go sit in an office nine to five, five days a week. Um, you're constantly thinking about what you're gonna eat, getting to bed on time, um, training, resting, recovering, massages. It's, it's an expensive job. My name is Sinead Denny. I am a 400 meter international athlete. Um, I've been training since I was about eight years old. Started with cross country and moved up to, moved down to even 800 metres um, and now I specialise in the 400 metres. Represented Ireland a number of times and have won many national titles. As Conor McGregor has proven, if you're willing to put in the time and effort in, into the sport that, you, that you're that you competing in, um, you will get the results. I used to work coaching kids in schools um, and we went into two of the schools he went to and they would have been saying that he'd be in the gym before school, after school um, and look where he's now. So he's, he's proved himself and he's trained hard to get where he is. He's very highly and very proud of having his country behind him and I, I totally understand where he's coming from because I have experienced that. Um, fans definitely helped me push for it. Um, I remember racing at Europeans last year in Amsterdam and the crowd was insane um, and it definitely it definitely helps you run a little bit faster. It just it kind of just lifts you off the track and you're just floating towards the finish line and it, it feels amazing. I think there's a lot of reasons Connor inspires people, but for me it's the fact that he went from being on the dole to being a multi-millionaire um, and it just shows the other athletes and, and myself that anything is possible. Oh, he'll always have a bit of crack with the boys. You know, he'll come in. Huh? Lewis, go plan though, how are you? And all that sort of stuff. And he'd wind him up then, you know. My name is Adrian Copeland. Our company's name is Louis Copeland & Sons. We're established over 100 years. We've shops in Dublin and Galway. My son Adrian's in the business and Louis's son Louis's in the business. We are probably the biggest bespoke tailors in the country as well as ready to wear specialists. Uh, we have a lot of international stars. Tom Jones would be a customer of ours, Pierce Brosnan, Dan Aykroyd, to name but a few. And let's not forget our own Conor McGregor. The first time I met Conor was about, about six years ago and it was in Galway at the opening of a nightclub. Uh, one of the guys said, uh, chat, Conor McGregor. I said, who's Conor McGregor? He said, ah, he's this new guy. He's going to be big in, in the sport. And I said, right, okay. So I was asked to go down and judge along with Conor 
the best dressed person. And he, you know, he had a good idea about clothing even then. The first time we dressed Connor was, he was on the Late Late Show and he wanted really to look the part and make a name for himself. He went on the Late Late Show and Ryan made a, a compliment to him to say how well he looked. And that was really kind of set him off into the, the well-dressed man thing, you know. He comes in and it's kind of, it's like the water, the, the sea open sort of thing, and he comes in and it's all flash and pomp and ceremony sort of thing. And he's a serious guy to measure because he's absolute muscle and sinew. There's no fat whatsoever on the guy. He's a perfect figure for to carry a suit. Connor, I think, solely has uh, started a renaissance in a bespoke tailoring. He has really influenced the younger generation. Younger, I mean, I'm talking about 16 to 20. Those guys are looking for something a little bit different. Their figures are so slim, like Connor, they can really show off a suit. And Connor, in his check suits and his daring fabrics that he, he would choose, have really kind of kicked off the thing. The younger guys have really lapped it up. The first thing they say is, I want something, you know, like what Connor McGregor would wear. It's been a fantastic uh, thing for our business, you know. Hi, I'm Thomas Nolan from Dublin City and I'm currently a personal trainer. Growing up I was always overweight. It was a kind of difficult growing up overweight. It was a lot of name calling and stuff. As I got to the teenage years it kind of got a little worse. There was a lot of anger in me, there was a lot of hate. It was at that point when people started to tell me I might be depressed and that maybe I should talk to somebody. And um, it just got too much. I started to have anxiety attacks, panic attacks. That was the loneliness side of it, you know. I was, I was alone a lot, you know. Um, even when people try to talk to me, family members, I, I just I wouldn't let them in. Um, I lost family members, and one of my family members that I lost was my, my aunt. Um, I spoke to her more than I even spoke to my own mother about my problems. She lost her son, and I, I tried to be there for her, you know what I mean? I tried to sort of fill a gap that she was at the losing, but she didn't cope well at all. And, and then she passed away, and it just got too much. And the turning point for me to get fit and healthy was when I'm, I booked a trip to go see Conor McGregor in Las Vegas. I remember getting the, the tickets to the World Tour press conference and being front row, Conor coming out with this Irish jersey and throwing it out. And I, being in front row, I caught the jersey. Fight got cancelled and it was rescheduled then for December. So I got a credit union loan. I said, I'm broke, I've no job, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm having panic attacks, I don't know how I'm going to last over the other side of the world when I don't even leave my bedroom. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it's something I have to do. It's something I want to do. It's going to be history and it's something I want to be a part of. It's something I want to be able to remember for the rest of my life. Little did I know it was going to change my life. Went into the fight anyway on the way and it comes onto the screen. Everyone just cheers. He gives that little smile and grin he gives. He has that, the crowd behind him. He has the, the, the Irish flag and he's walking out. Does his thing and then 13 seconds. That was it, the place just erupted and it was a life-changing experience. I mean, the emotions that were going through me were emotions that I just never felt before. And I just looked down on him and... Again, it was just a reminder to me that he was just another lad from Dublin with a dream. And so I went to a gym, the place was packed with people. Everyone was in good shape. I remember being on the treadmill about two minutes, being out of breath, having an anxiety attack, walking out of the gym. So I said, right, I'm going to give it another go, I'm not going to give up. So we joined a smaller gym. I remember buying headphones, I was Wi-Fi down at that gym and I remember zoning out and what I did to zone out was I'd go onto YouTube, I'd watch clips of, of Connor's fight while I was on that cardio machine. As time went on then, I began to build my confidence, my confidence, the weight started to fall off. There was this quote that Connor I always refer to from Connor, he says, uh, at the end of the day you have to feel some way, so why not feel untouchable and why not feel unstoppable, why not feel unbeatable. I began to feel unbeatable. I began, I began to feel unstoppable. That's when I lost my aunt, about three or four months in, into the, to, to my training. And then I said, oh, here we go again. I'm gonna fall back. And I began to doubt myself. But I didn't. So what I did to put myself in a situation, I joined a, 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 I joined a, a personal trainer course, passed out my, my exams, became a personal trainer. Just before, just a week before I actually started working in Floyd Fit, I was out at me at a party in my auntie's house, and the cousin I, I, I told you about, he was a, uh, it was his mother. He said some of my friends are coming around. As some of his friends came around, uh, I was standing in the kitchen, and Conor McGregor walks in. So he comes up to me, and he, he knew me from signing things from me and, and hearing about me from my cousin, and he, he just said, "Listen, I'm going to have a chat with a few people, and then I'll come back and I'll have a chat with you." And through this word, he went around, he got some pictures taken. And then he came back, he had a chat with me, and he was there for the night, like he was there all night, and it was crazy. He was to like, spend the night, like, night with him, his friends, and my own family. And like, two weeks out from his fight with Eddie Alvarez, where he went on to win 
and become a, the, the champ champ as he's, as he's known as now, you know what I mean? Like, and he's there sitting, chilling out like in a, in a, at a 50th, you know? And uh, I told him my story, I told him what I was at the doing in, in such a short space of time. And he was completely taken back by it. You could see how genuine he was, you know? Like, you see this side of him on the cameras and, and, and how he handles himself. But, you know, that's, that's, just, that's just a smart businessman that you see there, you know what I mean? That's just sales and sales and sales. And that's where it's gone. People call him arrogant. Those are people, are the same sort of people that shy away from successful people, you know what I mean? They, they critique successful people. He's actually inspiring a, a whole arena of people. If we can inspire just one person, my job is done, I've been I've, I'm successful. That was the dream, that was the goal. I have people from all over the world now mailing me since my story got out there, since I, like the Mac life, since Connor himself shared my story on his, on his own Facebook page, you know what I mean? And hearing from people who have, are going through what I'm going through is kind of heartbreaking, but I'm just there to, to try to give them a little bit of hope, you know, to tell them that there is a way out. The same way Connor gave me hope, you know. I'm looking at him now, he's, he's about to do the $180 million dance, as he calls it, with, with, with Floyd Mayweather. He has absolutely, he's already won, he hasn't even stepped into the ring yet, and he's already won. And I'm thinking now, like, now I'm thinking to myself, like, the sky is just the limit, you know. Kid from Dublin with more than a dream He knew one day he'd be the king of the UFC Oh, with a group of fighting Irish not to be pushed over Now here to take part, they were here to take over And from the start, John having a boy aside Whoever thought they'd be known worldwide After 60 G's, baby, and a contract to sign Leaving his old life and the social welfare behind And after two years came the featherweight champion of the world And Connor said he'd make him look like a little girl It only took 10 seconds to show his talk Wasn't cheap as he connected with the left And put Aldo to sleep There's only one Connor McGregor And there's the fighter there And he's gonna knock out Floyd Mayweather So Floyd, watch out, cause the Irish are coming you can talk all you want, but you'll do nothing Only one Conor McGregor, and there's the fighter bear And he's gonna knock out Floyd Mayweather So Floyd, watch out, cause the Irish are coming You can talk all you want, but you'll do nothing the lightweight belt was next in store To do what no other fighter had ever done before Became the first same time double champ in history And took the chance to apologise to absolutely nobody He came from working on a building site To get a million dollar paychecks from Dana White And now his money, his cars and his clothes he flaunts Cause the double champ does what the f he wants and Mayweather, you're old and you're small And the truth is that you'll do feck all Cause precision beats power and time and beats speed Why have you got a skill back Floyd you can't even read There's only one Conor McGregor and there's the fighter better And he's gonna knock out Floyd Mayweather So Floyd watch out cause the Irish are coming You can talk all you want but you do nothing Only one Conor McGregor and there's the fighter better